Renowned physician, educator, award-winning scientist, inventor, and number one best-selling author, Dr. Nicholas Pericone, reveals the modern-day answers to the ancient questions, has science found a way to turn back the clock? In Forever Young, part five of the highly acclaimed university lecture series, discover the revolutionary science of nutrigenomics, the science of allowing us to reconfigure our genetic blueprint. So let's join foremost anti-aging scientist and board-certified dermatologist, Dr. Nicholas Pericone, to discover nutrigenomics and why now more than ever there are anti-aging options. Ladies and gentlemen, Dr. Nicholas Pericone. Welcome to the fifth of the University Lecture Series. You know, it was uh, 10 years ago on this campus, in this very room, where I introduced my first book called The Wrinkle Cure. And in that book, I discussed my views on aging, which were looked upon as a little bit radical at that time, but it's nice to say that this time it's become mainstream. Essentially, aging and age-related diseases were caused by inflammation. And that tends to confuse people because they say inflammation, what do you mean? Well, I'm not, not talking about gross inflammation, which doctors call clinically evident inflammation. I'm talking about inflammation that is subclinical or on a microscopic or submicroscopic level. And so if we look at inflammation as a spectrum, it's the low-grade inflammation. We can't see it, we can't feel it, but it goes on all of the time in our cells, causing destruction to major organ systems. And so I also mentioned that such diverse diseases as Alzheimer's, Parkinson's, cancer, cardiovascular disease, obesity and wrinkles are all mediated by inflammation. And if you think about that, that is a pretty radical thought, that all of those diverse changes in our body can come about from inflammation. The way I came across this, as a medical student, we had to cover a course called histopathology. And what we had to do is we had to look under the microscope at every disease process so we know what it looked like clinically when we saw a patient and what it looked like microscopically. And I was looking at squamous cell cancer and noticed what I call an, an inflammatory infiltrate. And under the microscope, that just looks like you see a tumor and you'll see this blue confetti around it. And I thought, gee, why is the inflammation around this cancer? So I asked the professor. I said, I'm looking at this cancer and I'm seeing a lot of inflammation. Is it possible that inflammation could be somehow driving the growth of this tumor? And the answer was a flat out no. It's the immune system reacting. And I thought that was odd because usually cancers bypass our immune system. I carried that with me. And then as we studied more disease processes, whether it was atherosclerosis, there was inflammation in the arteries, diabetes, inflammation in the pancreas. And then when I started my dermatology residency, I'm looking at skin on the microscope at all different skin processes. And aging skin had an inflammatory infiltrate, but young skin did not. And so I was very much convinced that inflammation was at the basis of aging and many of the disease processes. Carrying that a little further, I said, okay, if inflammation is causing this problem, then what's causing the inflammation? And that was a bit of a mystery, and it took more than a couple of years to come to a conclusion. But fortunately, I was a bit of a, a, a self-taught nutrition nut as I was growing up and um, had read everything by Linus Pauling and actually had talked to Linus Pauling. And uh, Adele Davis was another nutritionist and knew that certain nutritional factors could bring down inflammation. Then also, while I was interning in pediatrics at Yale, um, there was a study going on showing that if you administered vitamin C, ascorbic acid, a common antioxidant, to patients with asthma, they would have less episodes of acute asthma. And we know that asthma is caused by a cascade of inflammation. So I'm looking at all of this and realized that the main causes of inflammation, there are many. Uh, there's ultraviolet light, there's stress, there are a number of things, but food was at the basis of most of the inflammation that we're seeing on a daily basis. And said, okay, foods can basically be broken up into groups of pro-inflammatory foods or anti-inflammatory. Now, pro-inflammatory foods are unique in that they all work the same. You know, bad actors are all the same. And what it does is they're high glycemic carbohydrates. There's also some other things like trans fats, but let's focus on the carbohydrates. When you get a rapid rise in blood sugar, you get an insulin response. And with this insulin response comes a burst of inflammation throughout all of your cells. And therefore, to, to bring inflammation down, to mediate that whole effect, we need to carefully control blood sugar and insulin. So looking at that, 
and looking at other factors, said, okay, if we took all of the pro-inflammatory foods out of our diet, would we do better and what would we replace them with? And then started looking at anti-inflammatory foods. And this is where a little background in nutrition help. I knew that all antioxidants act as anti-inflammatories. But of course, not all anti-inflammatories are antioxidants. Ibuprofen does not have antioxidant activity. And said, well, what, what is the function of these foods and how can we do this? So looked at foods and diet and patients and, and also looked at other factors like C-reactive protein, which is a serum marker of inflammation, and found that if we put people on a diet that removed all the pro-inflammatory foods and added anti-inflammatory foods, rapid decrease in inflammation systemically. And most important thing, you can see it on the skin. The skin is a barometer of what's going on inside of us. And you do not see beautiful, radiant skin on an unhealthy patient. It just doesn't exist. So when people were put on an anti-inflammatory diet, within a matter of days, they looked absolutely radiant. Uh, and when I say radiant, it's almost as if a light bulb was in, shining in their heads. And pores would get tighter, and there would be increased tone to the skin, look smoother, more definition to the jawline, higher looking cheekbone. And this is just from a few days of an anti-inflammatory diet. So I worked on this and developed um, a three-tiered anti-inflammatory program. And the, the first tier and the most important is diet. Beauty is really from the inside out. And if you think that you're just going to do one thing, like put a cream on your face or, or alter one aspect of your life and see a difference, it's not going to work. So beauty from the inside out. And so I worked out a diet and found that what I wanted to do is administer foods to people that were protein adequate because protein is really important because you need protein to repair your cells. And Adele Davis, a famous nutritionist, said, on the days we do not eat protein are the days we age. And when I talked to women in my practice and took an unofficial poll over a period of five years, most of the women were getting half of the protein that they actually needed. Second thing is, in addition to protein, we need fats. And I was coming out of the 90s where doctors had given all kinds of bad advice. The worst is the no-fat diet. Disastrous. You need fat to burn fat. You need fat for your immune system. You need fat for beautiful skin. You need fat for your brain to work. And so what we had is we had an epidemic of obesity and mental depression. If you don't have adequate fats, and the brain is 70% fat by weight, by the way, what happens is the neurotransmitter systems we have for thinking and for emotion and mood drop. And so I don't think it's a coincidence that at the end of the 90s, in addition to the low-fat, no-fat diets, we had an epidemic of mental depression. So instead of altering the diet, we developed wonder, wonder drugs like Prozac and the other we call SSRIs. So we need fats. We need protein. We need fats. And then we need to have lots of low glycemic carbohydrates that are rich in antioxidants and phytonutrients. And so I told my patients, look for foods that essentially have a lot of color. Because if there's colors present, we know there are phytonutrients like antioxidants. And antioxidants can fight off bad free radicals. When I talked about this 10 years ago, no one would really heard the term free radicals. They thought it had something to do with a political movement. <laughs> but just to review that, a free radical is a molecule or an atom that is missing an electron in its outer orbit. And they want to travel in pairs. So that molecule or atom will do anything to rip off another electron. When it does, it causes a cascade of events that causes damage to the DNA, the outer portion of the membrane, the mitochondria. And so that's the bad news. The good news is we have defenses against free radicals. They're called antioxidants. And so we have an endogenous antioxidant pool. Our body makes it. And then we have small anti antioxidant molecules that come from our diet. And so the third portion of this thing is eating lots of fresh fruits and vegetables. If you see color present, we're on the right road. And so let's look at the, uh, what the ideal meal was. And, and um, this is probably something you all know, but I want to repeat it anyway. I made up a diet of cold water fish, salmon, um, fresh green salad with olive oil and lemon juice, and then for dessert, mixed berries. And this is really well thought out, and I'll, we're going to go through the logic of this right now. Salmon, high quality protein. You need protein to repair your cells. In addition to the protein in salmon, there's a lot of color to salmon. And that comes from an antioxidant called astaxanthin. And that's one of the carotenoids. And astaxanthin is a very powerful carotenoid and can reduce inflammation very rapidly in the body and the skin. Studies taking astaxanthin supplements over 12 weeks 
with, with various uh, people of different ages, we can actually see a reduction in visible wrinkles. That's just in 12 weeks from astaxanthin.